My name is Tork and today I'm going to recap the movie Battle in the Lake Changzhen. The film opens with a Chinese army officer, Quan Li, in his humble board house. He has two brothers, one dead, Bei Li, and the other, 19 years old, Wan Li. The soldiers is called for duty. Americans are eyeing to unite North and South Korea by crossing the 38th parallel against the will of the newly formed Chinese army, PVA, People's Volunteer Army. Oliver P. Smith, commander of the 1st Marine Division, is leading the ground troop of the American Army. A high official meeting is called by Mao, the communist leader of the Chinese Army, to retaliate against American aggression. Mao doesn't want to war, but is compelled by the Americans to take up arms. Mao sends his son to war as a soldier. Americans strategize to attack, sending Airborne 4th Division to bomb the settlements around the Yalu River in Hangnam. They succeed to cross the 38th parallel and is about to cross the Yalu River. Mao sends his PVA as defense against the enemy. On the American side, the American officials are ready to cross the Yalu River. However, General Smith is concerned if the President of the United States, Truman, wants the aggressive procession. We learn that the air and the seas are controlled by the Americans with advanced fighter planes and battleships. On the Chinese side, the terrestrial army is grouping and strategizing to go to war. The Chinese general gives a speech about honor and glory to fight for their land and all the army chains war cries in sync. Quan Li is told to lead a division, the ninth corps of the Chinese army. He finds that Wan Li, his younger brother, has also joined the volunteer army despite his disapproval. Nine Corps boards a train to Ground Zero. In the train, Quan Li asks his trainer Li, who trained him as a rookie, to train his brother Wan Li too. The soldiers on the train bully the rookie and tease him in a playful manner. We also learn that Quan Li, the older brother, is well respected and has history with men in the Nine Corps. On the other hand, Quan Li tells Li he joined the army to gain respect from his older brother, to which Li says, one is only brave enough when the enemy takes him seriously. Quan Li, the commander of the Ninth Corps, commands his men to address themselves with honor and glory. Quan Li as a rookie is unable to understand the significance of brotherhood in arms due to his immaturity. Then we are shown a picturesque view of the Great Wall of China, and the Nine Corps gaze at it with pride and the train passes the Great Wall. Wan Li is given a gun by Li and told that his brother has his approval to handle an arm. The train stops at a station to gather supplies for the hostile and dangerous trip. On the contrary, US Air Force flies over the yard and the Nine Corps rush to board the train. Civilian tows supplies as the train leaves the yard. In Beijing, American officials realize they do not have the map of the Ground Zero. The train with nine cores on board stops in the middle of nowhere. One Li befriends a young soldier, they both start to bond. Then the US aircraft bombs the bridge and the train en route and starts bombing the area. Nine Corps hurry to leave the train and locate to a safe area. Chaos ensues as soldiers are reaching for whatever supplies they can carry. The train is bombed by the US aircraft, but the Nine Corps escape unscathed. The young soldiers realize the gravity of the situation. They reorganize and chatter up to relax and unwind from all the tension. After a few hours, the Nine Corps head ahead on foot and reaches a valley of rock bed. As they are about to walk across, two enemy aircraft flies in from the horizon. The corps lay still on the rock bed and is camouflaged thanks to their khaki uniform and hopes the pilot above do not see their presence. Much to their luck, the aircraft fly by without the knowledge of the presence of the Nine Corps. But unfortunately for the corps, the aircraft decide to fly by again and ensue a blind fire on the rock bed below, killing few of the soldiers of the 9th Corps. On the ground, corps decided 
not to die in the manner and fight against the aircraft just as they cocked their firearms the flight decided to divert course and return back to base soldiers of the corps are traumatized by the incident and the seniors talks words of acknowledgement of the morning and encouragement and head ahead u.s aircraft finds they can't detect radio communications on a location high on the snow cape mountains they persist on locating the PBS presence in the area but are unable to see anything moving. On the ground, the corpse lay still under a blanket of snow. The corpse then move ahead in the dusk and reach at location where ground troops of both the PB and American are at war. The corpse join as reinforcement and with lots of bombardment of tanks, fight bullets and lost lives on both sides, PVA with primitive ammunition is somehow able to pressure the enemy and gain control of the location. We also learned that the course is divided into two divisions with Quan Lee leading the first and Lee another. Lee discovers the reinforcement troops of enemy on route ground zero and swiftly sends one Lee to alert the Quan Lee division of the approaching danger. Meanwhile, Lee bombards the enemy tanks with mortars and firing ensues. On the other hand, Wan Lee reaches and hinders the focus of his brother to command the troop. A situation occurs where Quan Lee and his right mate is in a hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy two against three. Just as Quan Lee is stuck in a rear chokehold, Wan Lee appears with a knife. On repeated plea for help, the rookie is unable to deliver and is tackled by the third man. Quan Lee manages to overpower his enemy and shoot at the latter's foot and fling a gun at his brother Wan Lee. Wan Lee takes the gun and kills the enemy on top of him, saving himself. Gunfight continues on board ends. When Wan Lee, using his rope throwing skill and is able to bomb an enemy outpost, stopping the aggressive offense. Meanwhile, two enemy tank approaches the location and destroys the corps newfound confidence. A PVA soldier boards an anti-tank gun and fires at the tank, hardly doing any damage. The jeep with anti-tank weapon is destroyed by the tank. Quan Lee and his soldiers manages to take control of the tank and a tank fight ensues. The tank with the PVA inside is pushed down an incline. The enemy tank rolls down the incline, destroying huts on its way. A race to point the barrel at each other leads to a slow-mo shot of the projectile nicking each other, destroying the tank with the PVA, but the men are unharmed. Meanwhile, Lee's troop bombs the approaching enemy troops, gaining high ground and encircling the enemy, stopping the enemy advancement. At dawn, the PVA men tends to the collection of enemy armory and takes a moment to be grateful for their lives and brothers in arms. At the enemy base on Eastern Front, of Hagaruri, the Americans are in shock and argument between Smith and the general occurs about the consequences of their supposed actions. The general warns Smith of scalping him if things go out of hand. Meanwhile, the PBA regroups at a friendly outpost and the wounded are looked after. Jolly and playfulness filling amidst the men. One Lee is again teased by the soldier to which Lay takes a stance, telling the men to leave the kid alone. Among all this, Mao's son reaches and joins the Ninth Corps, realizing the intensity and gravity of the situation. The PBA moves on foot to capture the next enemy post at Lake Changjin. The PBA officials realizes the supply and food shortages for the troops. On the other hand, the Americans are in festivity and in abundance of supplies and food. The cold and hunger is unbearable, but the will and the determination of the PBA is immovable. As Smith is about to have his mail, a news from the Air Force interrupts and he learns about a location where the radio signal is disturbed. Sensing the PBA's presence, he sends the Air Force to bomb the location. On the ground, soldiers run for safety and officials stay in bomb-proof underground bunkers as the flames rise from the ground to the skies. The PBA official swears that the day after tomorrow, November 27, 1950, will be the day for the retaliation. Orders are given. Strategies are discussed to send the 20th and the 21 corps to the enemy location. With declining temperature in the minus, the Chinese move forward. The Americans are baffled by their enemy's presence in the location which were thought otherwise. 
At dusk, the PBA is lurking in a valley nearby the American outpost in North Korea. Radio signals are being established. We learn it is the time of Christmas and PBA decides to give the American a reason to go back home. On the day November 27, 1950, American tanks advances while the PBA is keeping track of their location, waiting for the right opportunity to attack. Location of Smith Corps and other enemy divisions are discussed. At night, the Nine Corps arms up to leave their camp. Quan Li and Li have a brotherly moment before the attack. Lake Changjin. The PBA waits for the signal to attack. Flare guns are sought, signaling to commence attack. PVA runs downhill to the enemy camp besides the lake. Explosions, bullets, falling bodies, snipers and rolling bolts of gunpowder. War cries, soldiers running and epic battle ensues. The Americans, not expecting the attack, are at a disadvantage. Trucks, snipers, outposts, bunkers are destroyed by the PVA. The PVA prevails and overpowers the machine and equipment of the American with sheer manpower. The Americans order air bombardment. Soldiers fall down dead on both the sides. Emotions are rising high. Brawls end with stabs with forks. More American establishments are destroyed. Men throwing bomb from a truck and exploding another truck. Tanks are being captured and destroyed. Grenades are thrown inside the tank's cabin exploding in seconds sending the thrower a few meters in air. The American soldiers flee in trucks. The PBA reaches the tent where the American officials are situated. At a point, one Lee is told to shoot an enemy but choose not to kill and shoots inches away from the enemy. Air reinforcements are called as the PBA begins celebrating their latest victory. Conley's peer talk about soldiers' honor and glory to the now battle-bound one Lee. Just as this is happening, enemy aircraft approaches, disturbing the calm and begins shooting fires from the sky. A PBA soldier with a bazooka shoots down the aircraft, but before the aircraft crashes, it manages to drop a FX bomb to locate the enemy in the dark. As bombers drop bombs from the sky, Lay takes matters into his hand to take the FX bomb away from his comrades. Eventually, a bomb hits his jeep. Soldiers rush to his aid. He utters his last word, asking his fellow men to not leave him alone there. Fighting continues till the next morning. The Americans are forced to retreat. Smith finds a frozen Chinese soldier out in the cold and salutes the will of the Chinese soldier. The PBA attacks the Hagaruri base and chases away the Americans, winning the Korean War. My name is Thork. If you like the video, like, share and comment. See you in the next one. Peace.